Remember to unmute ourselves, always a tribute. Hey, welcome, lovely to see you all. And uh, we're down in London uh, at a six day training, process work training. Um, so we're in the same screen here. And I uh, love to see you. And to, to this today's session is probably the most kind of crucial one in that it's about how we do assemblies differently. We can all do assemblies and try and achieve ends and try and get somewhere, but this is about how can we, how can we be present? How can we do this differently? How can we meet each other differently? Um, and so this is about shifting to a kind of power with assembly rather than a, a power over assembly. Yeah. And it, really, it's about not using anything, ourselves included, as a means to an end. And I'm the worst culprit. I know this. i forever overriding my needs to try and achieve good things or not good things. Uh, and learning to actually take care of myself and to be present has been quite a journey. So I maybe you've already made that journey, but in which case that's fantastic. But that's really what this session is about. How do we shift to a power with? Um, how do we practice getting out of thinking and being as usual? So we often talk about business as usual, but it's being as usual, thinking as usual, that really catches us in that in that cycle. So we're going to start with a with a check in uh, in fours, and then we're going to um, give it a kind of introduction to the session, and then go into a kind of mindfulness exercise of of really being in our bodies and imagining the future differently. And have a chance to reflect on that and whether that worked, didn't work. Um, and then move into a process of how do we create safety? How do we create safety in a space? How do we create safety in a group? How do we create safety in an assembly? And that's quite a challenging question. As soon as you say, how do we create safety? You kind of become aware of how risky things can feel. Um, so that's that's me doing the intro. He was going to do just about everything else, right? So this is me just to introducing this bit, this session. Um, and I guess I just wanted to give an illustration of the kind of the power over bit. So this morning I was taking my grandson to school and he was getting very cross. And I noticed myself getting very cross in response as well. Uh, and then suddenly remembered that his dad had said that yesterday he had a fight in the playground. And he was cross about going to school because he was going to a situation where he had quite a lot of fear around it. And I just noticed myself shifting from that kind of control, power over to get you to school and get me to a training I need to get to, shifting from that to, oh, how are you doing? What's up? Uh, and it just moves straight from a control to a being with. So in a way, it's quite simple what we'll be looking at today, but it's quite a profound, for me anyway, a shift from uh, controlling for all the best reasons, but actually harmful effect to actually really, really being with. So yeah, check in. Yeah, check in. And we were going <clears> to <throat> suggest that people use the council process that we, we did last last week yeah so so the idea is to get into fours and just to share how you're feeling or if those of you who were here last week we were, we were suggesting that you ask somebody what hope they had in the political system or what alternative political system they might they might wish for um or just what helps you get out of stress what helps you to soothe yourself so those three questions just how are you feeling which is a straightforward one what kind of what hopes do people have in the political system and for an alternative one and what do you do to, to soothe yourself? So those are the three questions. And in the council, if you remember last week, the council circle process is just basically speaking from the heart and listening from the heart. And the most important thing is the listening. <laughs> uh, Relearning how to listen is the most crucial thing and, and sharing the time equally. So speaking from the heart, listening from the heart, sharing time equally. And we're going to, the idea is to have five minutes each, a group of four, um, to speak and to be heard and to, and to listen. So, yeah, I hope that's okay. Joanna, do you want to bounce us into these groups and then we can take it from there and start?
coming back thick and fast now. I think that's probably everybody. Hey, welcome back. So, yes, yeah, so I'm going to do a little bit of chat. Um, and I'm aware that for some people, some, possibly all of what I'm going to say is not new. Um, I still think that it's useful to um, say it. And part of why I think it's useful to say is because it's to do with the role of the facilitator, which we'll go on to more uh, next week. And, and one of the strongest things that a facilitator does that isn't isn't about the program it's it is it as around culture setting and you do that as a facilitator by how you show up and by the kind of things that you say to kind of frame the work that you're going to do together so it's important to say this stuff even if we all know it um i think if we all knew each other really well then maybe we could really do a shortcut and this is still a bit of a shortcut because the the um as as justin said uh, we're on this course, we're on day two of six. Um, and as far as I can, it's one of those things where you're on a course and it's like around the same area as this. And so it's throwing all my thinking up in the air. And then I'm coming here trying to sound like I have any clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, oh, oh, and uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, not muted. Um, yes, so that so that culture building piece can be very long, and it can and it, you can make shortcuts as well. And if you make shortcuts, you may need to revisit it with people. Um, yeah, one of the reasons. So one of the reasons that this session feels really important um, is that. It, it it would be really easy just to just to go oh assemblies that that's a different way of doing politics, and we, we all just do just do assemblies and we'll get a different political system, but we the the way in which we've all been brought up within a system of power over means that that system is alive in us whether we know it or not, and so this session is really about how do we both understand and start to explore um, power over in ourselves? How do we uh, start to engender and nurture and grow power with in ourselves and between us? And how do we create uh, processes which do their best to not trigger uh, power over responses? Whether, whether that's power over or power under, because power over needs power under to work. If you do, if you pull a power over move on someone and they just go, well, uh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, they can say it very nicely or they can say it very angrily, but you can't do power over to some, on someone who won't play power under. Um, so that, those things are kind of inextricably linked and and need we all need to go through our own process of unpicking that. And in our assemblies, we need to try and create processes that 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 enable that to shift or to start shifting. So it's challenging. It's it, we're trying to unpick a system that we're in while we're in it, and it's difficult. And we need to accept that we will often make mistakes. And so that, again, is a, is a really good attitude going into an assembly, whether you're a facilitator or a participant, to, to accept, we're going to get this wrong. Um, and it, that's OK. It's OK to get things wrong. One of the numbers that power over pulls on us is that we have to get it right all the time, that we have to always know what we're talking about, that we have to be authoritative, uh, that people who are in charge have to... Um, you know, have have everything kind of uh, all the backups, all the all the counter arguments already done. But this is about a more live, lively way of being together. That sometimes means that we make a mess. So being reassuring to oneself, because many of us have a kind of inner perfectionist that thinks that we should get it 
absolutely right, even if we're let fine with other people getting it wrong. Um, and also doing that for other people while, when you're holding the space is an important uh, ingredient in this creation of more equal power structures, processes. So <clears throat> the way that we understand the way that power over makes its home in us really uh, draws a lot on um, understandings about trauma. Um, this is not necessarily something that we speak about a lot in assembly processes because it's still quite countercultural, it's still quite sensitive, it can feel like a lot, and many people aren't particularly ready for it. But it's important to tell people who might be running assembly processes that this is where we're coming from. And obviously you make your own relationship with it. But uh, so trauma is a is a physiological process. It's something that happens in us in our in our bodies, really without any conscious control. And I'm going to give a really potted version of how it happens. Uh, I'm not a, a, a um, neurologist, uh, and I I would have a very simplified version of how this happens. But I find it super helpful. And it's basically that when something happens to you that is overwhelming, either because it's just so big, so like in a lot of the, the, the ways that we tend to think about trauma is like PTSD, people who've been in a war, people who've been attacked, that kind of like obviously overwhelming, terrifying thing happened to you. But actually, particularly when you're a small person, when you're a baby and a child, a lot of things can feel overwhelming that don't seem to adults to be overwhelming at all. You're coming in with really no knowledge of this world, of how things work, and you're piecing things together and making patterns. You're learning how gravity works. You're learning how, how you stand up and walk. And the, and the brain at that age is patterning, patterning, patterning all the time. So it can pattern in quite small things or things that seem quite small. Like Justin was talking about last week, this, this sense of being alone. Um, for many, many, many children who grow up in the global north, we're, we're left to ourselves, we're left to cry, we're put in our own rooms, in our own beds. And that is, is sewn into our patterning, that sense of aloneness, of I have to, I have to make do by myself. So, and, and, the, and there are lots of things, and, and many of them are around, uh, many of them are around power over. So very often our forms of parenting are quite authoritarian. The parent gets to say what the child has to do, whether or not it's to do with the child's immediate safety. It's like, it's dinner time, you're eating. It's bedtime, you're going to bed. And there are parents who will negotiate around those things, but there are lots of parents who don't. And that can so into our personalities, a sense that this big person will tell us what to do. Um, we learn that right the way through school. The way that we get taught in school is, is all very, very top down. There's almost no decisions that kids are allowed to make that are at all meaningful about like when they learn, what they learn, who they learn with. Um, I, I think there, there are attempts to make to, to lessen that. But fundamentally, you have to go to school. You don't, most people don't get a choice around that. So there's all of these things that we learn right the way through our lives that where power over is a baked in assumption. And it's kind of like we show up to this meeting that is our lives and the contract has already been made and we don't get a say. And we don't even, it's so, it's so sewn in, it's so assumed that we don't even know that that contract's been made and we don't ever get to think about it. So what we want to do in assemblies is not do that. We want to show up in a space and say, how do we want this space to be run? Or here are some ideas about how we're gonna run this space. And 
and how how you know what do you think about that we're going to go on later on in this session hopefully if we don't run out of time um to look at group agreements and these can often be really really tick box but they're i think they're one of the things that can be really helpful to this consciously making a new contract together a power with contract so to to go back to the <clears throat> to the way that all this lives in our bodies. Um, it's obviously really, really different um, how this lands in us, depending on where we're positioned in society. Um, one of the things that this, this, this system of domination does is it keeps us separate from one another by, by ranking us. So, in general, if you're a white middle class male, um, there are lots and lots of things that you can do without ever being questioned. There are lots of lots of things that you get um, in life without ever even having to ask for them. Um, and and as a white middle class woman, you get a lot of those same things, but not maybe the same things as the guys do. And so there's this pecking order. There's this, this system of rank, and it's complex because sometimes you've got some bits of privilege, but not other bits. And it's something, as we're doing on this training, that you can easily spend six days unpacking, <laughs> probably a whole lifetime. Um, and it, and what I'm seeing on this training is that if we don't talk about that, then some people are going to walk into an assembly assuming that they have a right to be there and they have a right to speak and be listened to, which actually is a fair enough assumption in a, in a, in a thing like a community assembly. You would want everybody to feel like that. But lots of people have not had that experience in their lives and will not necessarily be feeling so welcome, will not necessarily be, be feeling so confident that their voice will be heard or appreciated. And so finding ways to acknowledge that we're coming in with different expectations um, and that together we need to build a new expectation where everybody's voice matters, where we listen to everybody, um, where we do our best to share power. And if we're not sharing power equally, then we really notice it and, and it's okay to bring it up. These are the kinds of um, things that we can build into assemblies to make them more inclusive and more likely to feel like welcoming places that a wide range of people can participate in. And we need that. We, we, we're dealing with complex problems, whether it's with you know, a community that's got cold and drafty houses or a community that's worried about sea level rise or a community that's you know, having a, their local park destroyed or whatever it is that your your assembly is focusing on if we don't have a diversity of voices then we're just speaking in our own echo chambers so we need to find ways to um to make participation meaningful for everybody there's another there's another group or part of the picture that almost always gets left out. And I want to bring it in without having very clear answers as to how to include it. And that is the natural world. Um, it's still super countercultural to have somebody in assembly speaking for the birds or for the land or for the sea. Um, there are places where that happens but in most communities in the UK, it would be a very small subsection of people that would kind of go, oh, yeah, well, of course, of course, the, the sea gets a voice. Um, and we haven't experimented enough for me to feel really confident and be able to say to you, well, this is a really good way of bringing that in. So this is a leading, you know, a, a leading edge for us around how do we include the. Um, the. Uh, the other players, because humans have such an impact on the other species 
and in ecosystems that we live alongside. Um, and, and we hardly ever listen to them. So uh, I wanted to include that, yeah, without having loads of answers. Um, the three things that I wanted to bring that feel really, really important for us to facilitate um, and support in assembly processes are listening, um, understanding our, our, our reactivity and having options around that, and uh, and self reflexivity, being able to really notice what's going on for us, and th those last two are, are, are quite connected with one another. What I often say to people at the beginning of assembly is just like notice um, what happens to you when someone says something they don't you don't like, because very often it's going to be one of three things: you're either going to go on the attack, you'll get angry, and you'll want to say, "Well, you're wrong." You know, what about this? Or you're going to uh, uh, want to get away. You're going to want to run and just say, oh, actually, I've had enough of this conversation. I'm off. Or you'll zone out. You'll just go, let's change the subject or I'm not listening anymore. Or, um, And so when, when one of those things is happening to you, notice it and note and 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 consider whether you have choices here, because any of those things are gonna stop you from listening to that person who has a different take on what it is to be human in this moment than you do. And very often creating space around that and asking questions around that, being curious rather than being reactive can get you to a different place in that conversation than you might normally get to because you're doing the thing that you always do. Um, so that so yeah that that using that kind of language feels like it's a way of drawing people into uh, an examination of how do I respond how do I react what happens to me when I get triggered um, and and I think more and more I think that actually there needs to be a, a part of the assembly early on where where we actually unpack that we don't talk about the issue we're here to talk about we talk about how we're going to talk about that issue and what's important and it's this whole thing about if we don't talk about that how are we ever going to do anything differently because we're so well trained <clears throat> so what i wanted to do next was um a little bit of uh, a, mo a mode change. Um, I really love doing uh, meditations and often they're not always try to bring them in with mixed results into assembly type processes. Um, I wanted to, uh, so, so I wanted to take you through a little process where we go inside and think about stuff and um, I also wanted to do it in a way that we might do in an assembly. So we're going to do a little kind of future scan. And then you'll get into twos and just talk about how it was for you. So while you're doing this, assuming you want to, because it is entirely voluntary. And if this is not the kind of thing you like, please feel free to go and make a cup of tea. It'll take approximately five minutes. Tea, whatever you want. Turn the sound off. I <laughs> Do, do something else with yourself or take notes. Um, it'll take about five minutes. And while you're doing it, see if you can also notice, oh, well, that bit was really difficult. Or, oh, I like the way she said that. Or this whole thing just freaks me out and nothing Eva has said has made me not freak out about this. You know, what could, what could make that different or could nothing make that different? So yeah, bit of self-reflexivity. Okay. I want to I want to dive into this because of time. So it could help if you feel yourself moving away, moving back from the screen a little bit. You may want to switch your image off. You're super welcome to do that. Um, so just moving back into your own space. 
and even into your own inner space if you feel comfortable doing that and you may want to close your eyes or just look down so you've not got so much visually coming in and if you just notice your breath without trying to change it that's sometimes quite difficult just notice it coming in and going out really uh really spotting where you feel it in your body could be in just one place or it could be in lots of places in your body and it could be feel quite tight or it might feel quite easy so just notice the quality of your breath And maybe just slow it down just a touch. And notice whether that changes anything in your body if you slow your breath a little bit. If you do a very quick scan through your body, just noticing where you might be holding some tension and giving yourself permission to let go of some of that. Just for a minute, just take a rest. Just don't do anything. You're not appearing on Zoom. You're not focusing on the outside world, just on your own inner space. And I'm just going to take you on a really short walk through time. <laughs> so we're going to imagine, I don't know, maybe imagine a time machine that you can just hop into. Just just happens to be lying around. Uh, you can sit in it or on it. And it's going to take you 15 years in the future. So maybe there are bells or whistles or switches. But somehow in your mind, in your imagination, you find yourself 15 years into our future. And you're seeing your same place. You're, you're wherever you are just now, but time's gone by. And maybe it's also the morning. So take a wonder around the place that you're in and notice to begin with whether you've gone into a, a future that is based on your fears or a future that's based on your hopes. I wonder if you can even flip between those. If you can look at the same scene, the same street or countryside or whatever it is you're looking out of. First with the eyes of your fears. And then with the eyes of your hope. And I'm just gonna leave you for 30 seconds to look around wherever this place is that you are and notice that, give yourself a, a chance to flip between those two, those two states of hope and fear. So wherever you find yourself now, if you can make your way back to your time machine.
and do whatever the time machine needs to make it bring you back to this evening in your chair. And just take another, just a last 15 seconds of enjoying the feeling of relaxation. Appreciating your your inside space, the, the space that happens when you go inside yourself. And then start to think about making a connection back out into the outside world and with the screen at whatever distance feels comfortable to you right now. So we will just pop you very momentarily into a room with somebody else so that you can talk about how that was. And there is no right way to have experienced that, even if there wasn't very much in it at all. Uh, you can talk about how you find these kinds of things. Um, you'll get... Yeah, roughly five minutes each, maybe a bit less once we've done the faff of um, of getting you into breakout rooms and then out again. Um, so think in terms of maybe four minutes each way. So, and I, I would like you to use what they call active listening. And, and you can spend a long time talking about active listening, but it's really just listening. <laughs> it's really just listening to the other person, not focusing too much on your own thoughts um, and really, really taking care with what this other person is telling you. You may be somebody who likes to listen to the detail um, or you may be somebody who likes to kind of draw back and listen to the kind of meaning and the overview of what somebody's saying, but just really paying attention and, and not interrupting uh, yeah. while that person's speaking and then swap over. Um, yeah, and then we'll, uh, we'll bring you back and then we'll go into a break after that. So you should have an invitation on your screen to join a, a breakout room. It looks like we've got threes in some, that's okay. Everyone who's here, are you seeing a, I like Leith forever, it's good. <laughs> um, are you seeing the option to go into a breakout? Anyone having problems? Hi, sorry, I'm not seeing it, but I just literally joined the meeting about 10 <laughs> minutes ago. I've just been walking home, so I just oh, caught right. the last half of that sort of meditation. <laughs> okay. Door, yeah. So. Yeah, I think maybe still good to, to join in with somebody and um yeah. just just check in just say say how you're doing um vicky are you stuck well i, I ended up on my own oh okay well maybe you can go with leith forever i'm sorry i don't know what your name is thank you but uh they've just arrived you know even, evenly um you know allocating things that that's not necessarily the same thing as equity because for some people, it's very easy to use all that. And for other people, they're starting from a different place, in which case to to make things equitable, perhaps they need uh, there's a there's a there's a picture that illustrates this is kind of like, is everyone the same height? Some people might need a higher box to stand on to get to the same height. So just just I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but just those two concepts are not the same. But but, but what are we going for here? Is it about having equity of space or equality um mm. totally that's great mm. brian yeah i often try to think about things in terms of extremes so if we had a, a workshop or a, an assembly 
and someone's taking all the time, that would be an extreme. But the other extreme is that is somebody being allocated their time and not do it, saying anything. You know, so how how would that work out? So I would say that what's needed there is that the facilitator is assisted by another in the group to help shut down the person who wants to take all the time in the most convivial way possible, you know, <laughs> because it might be that a person has trauma at the time and maybe abandoning the whole workshop is necessary for bringing that person forward and bringing them into the assembly. Because much of this harder work, I think, is about bringing people on, not shutting people up. So a strict rule for me would be very, very difficult because I want to bring people on board and not to switch them off by having a rule. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, I think you're really right. And I think again, it's that it's that judgment um that 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 one needs to make the whole time because speaking a lot can also be uh um a result of kind of privilege of, of thinking that you that you deserve to you know the space you're used to being listened to you can go on at length and but it can also be it can also be a result of of trauma or not having been listened to and suddenly suddenly there's a space for you and you really want to use it or also people who are who are um uh, sorry someone's told me the word for it but like who think who think by speaking and they don't necessarily know where they're going or what they're going to say at the end. It's just like it's got to get out there. Um, and and it that can be difficult for other people, but that's the way that person's got to is going to be able to meaningfully um participate. So it's not it's not easy and it's not simple. And I think one of the things that we are uh, uh learn in this in this assembly, you know, we are trying to really change our experience of decision making together is that there's a lot of tolerance we we we're constantly having to tolerate difference tolerate people thinking and feeling really differently to us and how do we do that in a way that doesn't completely just make us want to run away and hide so so that we get enough of our needs met but we're also able to be to build the resilience to be with things that don't feel natural or, or how we would want them to be but it's all a negotiation yeah and the other magic of that though is that if you are including all those voices then your own diverse voices get included so it's not just that we're all different between each other there's lots of difference inside so something about that inclusivity and i and responding to brian's point i think i've certainly what experiences going off with people who are in a really terrible state so mm -hmm. you're giving the person the full attention they need but they're not necessarily acting that out in the whole space and then making sure they can come back in and have the space they need so just I think there are ways of ways of responding to that particular problem that you raised there brian that are quite specific yeah that, that comes about uh, from support to the facilitator so that that support so they have to enable them to absolutely. do that that's yeah that's just trying to make it more explicit yeah absolutely okay mm -hmm. Yes, and that, and we will come back to this um, idea of having of of the different roles of facilitation, because we we focus a lot on the person standing up in front and bossing people around or you know helping people do the things they want to do. But there's there's a lot to facilitation, and it's we've we've found it useful to think of that as quite a kind of expanded um, function that that can have people doing quite different things. So being available for giving care and listening to someone who needs a lot all of a sudden, who's triggered, um, but not in the main group, can be a can be a facilitation role that somebody is there to to play for the for for the whole group. Shall we move on? I'm not seeing any any more hands, and we wanted to go um, do a little bit on this kind of group agreement. Um, and think about a little bit about how this cannot be tick box exercise, but can be a meaningful um, way of talking about our group culture. What what how it is that we want to be together. Um, so I wanted to share um, a, a slide that that uh, gives some suggestions, but but before that. Um, Hang on, two ticks. I'm just going to look at what we're supposed to be doing. 
that, yeah. Before that, we were going to get into into breakout groups again in fours. Please take a moment at the beginning to discuss how you would like to do the timing. <laughs> um and see if you can find something that, that everybody is happy enough with. Um, we wanted to have a conversation for uh, 15 minutes. It's going to be 10 minutes because we can go. Okay, maybe maybe more like 10 minutes. Um, so roughly two minutes each around what, what, what makes it safe for me to be in group spaces? Um, what are the things that, Help me be there that helped me raise my voice that helped me do what I need to do or and or what really doesn't help me um so and, and what make what helps me listen and what helps me to speak I think both how, mm. can I, how can I listen from the heart can I speak from the heart but not what helped me to get the space to say the soapbox thing that somebody was mentioning which I thought was really helpful not to be on a soapbox but how to how to really be able to speak from myself and listen to others speaking for themselves what makes that safe Okay, are we ready with breakouts? Oof. Fantastic, thank you so much. Joanna has been... Thanks, Chrissy. I hate that voice. Mm. Recording. Himself. Yeah, yeah, we need to have you on the train every meeting, keeping us straight. Hi, yeah. Welcome back. Um, I hope I hope everyone managed to to get a time, uh, get their time in that we we realised that we had not taken a note of the time when we opened those breakouts. So we were kind of going, oh no, we're going to come in, in the middle of somebody's go, and you're already talking about how stressful it all is. Um, Anna Maria, you have your hand up. Is that on purpose? You want to say something? Oh, we usually share, uh, so I was already getting ready to share ah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. But I think because we only have 15 minutes or so left of the session, what I was thinking was I was going to show you my slide about the group agreement. Um, and and we uh, your feedback is really, really welcome, um, but we could do it as a kind of um, trying to... Uh, 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 um, improve the group agreement template that I'm offering. So, uh, so let me share. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, so, oops, crikey. So this on the left is is something from our handbook and we haven't actually mentioned the handbook yet, but it's it's basically the kind of big book of everything we've learned. And it's something that we'll share with you at the end of this. Uh, and um, it's got most of the stuff, in fact, it's probably got all and more of the stuff that we've been talking about in these sessions. And we don't share it in advance because it, then it's often people will be reading it and not necessarily present in the session um if anyone's desperate to see it then let me know and and it's not secret it's it's uh shareable but this this sample group agreement comes from it um i'll just go over the things that are in it and then we've got a box here that we can put um any additions or changes that people might want so keep to session start and end times is sometimes a good one to have uh, to try and remind people that in breaks and things to uh, to come back because that means that everyone can start on time. Uh, experiment and be bold is something I often like to have because I think we often uh, are less ambitious than we could be about what we could do together, what we what change we could make. It's okay to get things wrong. We're here to learn is a kind of reassuring one that I think is really useful to have in. Value different ways of knowing, thinking, and processing. So we've talked a lot about that, with the fact that we're all different. Share speaking time fairly and value listening at least as much as speaking. Again, fairly is a, is a, a movable feast as we've been exploring. And be respectful of others, even when we disagree. 
So these are the kind of things that have cropped up that have felt like they're really useful in assembly processes. But we're we're a group, we're an assembly. We're going to be meeting for um, weeks to come. So are there comments, additions, changes, reflections that you would like to add? And I can't see you while I'm sharing my screen. Um, so I, I would suggest that you just butt in and say. So, oh, and I can see you've got your hand up, please. Uh, to know how to interrupt. And this is something that we talked about now. And uh, <laughs> there, there are ways of doing it. And it's not, we, we discussed how it's not about not interrupting. It's about knowing how to do it. Um, and um, and this can come with um, better uh, awareness of um, of uh, a method like hand signage. So, you know, like there are ways of doing it. Uh, yes. Yeah, so are you saying you would like to um, say use hand signals? Yeah, for example, in Extinction Rebellion, we have that like very well set. And uh, you know, one of the hand signals is to know how to interrupt. And that's very helpful in uh, um, any assembly to be able to hear and be heard. Yes, and I was you offered before to share that. I was wondering whether I was going to ask on the uh, WhatsApp chat, but um, I can ask you now whether you could uh, share those hand signals next week in the facilitation session. Mm, absolutely, yeah, I can. We can go over it. Yeah, next next week. Yeah, sure. Great, thank you. Um, so, uh, anybody else like to comment on what we have here or um? Add anything or change anything? Eva, we had um just a couple of comments in the chat that are additions. Can I read these out? Please. Thank you. Um so Alex said it is possible to have the time um in a breakout group that would be helpful. So just in relation to breakout rooms. Chrissy would like to say, I'd like to add trust the process. <laughs> mm. And, and the, the the time in breakout groups is is there a is there a, a group agreement way that that could be phrased or is it more about I think this was a tech maybe like a tech add on that we could have the the time it but maybe Alex yeah that's how I understood it maybe adding so, so be clear about time. Does that sound right, Alex? You happy with that? Be clear, clear about time and breakout groups. If you want to put it in the chat, um, you can. Was there more, um, Johanna? There's one more in the chat. Um, Sarah said, I like the idea of passing the mic to the next person. Helps to mix things up between those who are eager to put themselves forward. So pass uh, the mic. Right. So passing the mic. So rather than um rather than just having people sort of popcorning, having a having a like a almost like a circle where you where you get the mic whether you've asked for it or not. Yeah, it's sort of like equitable time and I'd be one of the people that would jump in quickly. So, you know great to encourage the more hesitant voices to speak first as well great um yeah we can we can do that i mean that's partly what the council circle does really isn't it is is um uh yeah offer you the time even if you haven't asked for it um and we can maybe think about other ways of doing that in these sessions anybody else got something to add to this yeah, or yes um i'd like to say something about uh confidentiality but i'm not quite sure what in this context and i think it might be to do with being very respectful about what people have said in their um in their sessions not kind of being profligate with oh so and so said such and such and it, just being careful with what people have shared within yeah, within the person. 
yeah, be respectful of it and be caring with what people have said to you as part of our meetings in in our during our meetings. Yeah, or what you've heard generally. Okay. Any more? Um, I'm not sure if this is for the group agreement or it's more of, I suppose, like a, a contract between facilitator and, and group, maybe, but it's something that came up in our discussion. And it's about being clear about the purpose of a particular exercise and the structure of a particular exercise. So as facilitators, being very clear about what we are expecting the group to do and what um what we expect to, to come out of that exercise um whether that's just sharing between the group or whether that's you know a, a more concrete outcome or output that, that comes together later down the line or whatever it might be but just being very um and whether that's you know very structured or quite loose and free-flowing but just having that clarity for everybody in the room so that they know what to expect and what is expected of them. Mm. Right. You're you're all using this sample group agreement to give really skillful feedback. I really <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> it's really well done. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. Is there is there more? Oh yes, there's a few more. Vicky. I see them. Um, a couple of things, if that's okay. Um, one was, and it's an XR thing as well, which I think is interesting, is empathy before education, you mm -hmm. know, in every interaction. And I was thinking about compassion for yourself and compassion in the room, and that's the sort of, I want to say prerequisite, but it's not quite the right, the, the right word, but it's the tone, it's the culture, if you like. Um, and then the other thing that I worried about increasingly, actually, is... We, we're using the word, so we talk about, you know, listening rather than speaking. And, and I've been thinking about neurodiversity and just generally diversity. And I think about assemblies where lots of people, you know, their preference may not be for speaking. And so building in, building in, I don't know, tools, ways that people can communicate that's not verbal, I think, as a facilitator, you know, I'm relying on, you know, talking and energy, but actually other stuff. <laughs> that was, mm -hmm. those were the things in my head. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Vicky. And I, and I totally agree. I mean, I think it's maybe not something we thought about so much in the training, but we really do put a lot of work into assemblies, in, into exactly that, that people may not want to listen to an awful lot of stuff and certainly may not want to speak. So give them give people other ways to uh, participate. And maybe we'll also think about that for this for this training too. David, I see you. I haven't seen you for a long time. You're muted. I do feel to reach my mouse pointer up to the unmute, um, I guess. Um, it was just a thought, it may not be the right thought, but there was a talk about, you know, respecting each other's privacy and so on. Um, something which does work in other sorts of meetings is the, the sort of Chatham House rules where you, you, can, you can say that somebody talked about something without saying who it was um, so that the idea can be discussed without... Um, without discussing who it was and the motivation. Of course, that leads to then people wanting to find out who it was who, who had that thought. But if you can avoid that, it can be a useful way of allowing a discussion to go ahead without too personalising it. So that might be worthwhile thinking about. Mm, thanks very much. That's great. Yeah. And... and Anna, and then we will need to round up because we're nearly we're nearly out of time. But please, I'll be very short. Um, 
I posted in the group chat, but then I realized I actually really didn't want to share it because I thought it was really good um, and echoes a lot of what's said here. And it's host yourself and host others. And it seems kind of straightforward, but it did force me as a participant of the workshop to reconsider how I was present in the workshop. So by host yourself, it's really, you know, the whole compassion for yourself that was mentioned, but also what do you need to do in order to be present? And it kind of picks in the workshop and it brings back that responsibility to yourself, not to the facilitator, not to the other people in your group. It kind of a reminder of if you're there today, be present. And if you can be, what is it that is keeping you from it? And you're the sole responsible for making sure that you can host yourself in that space. And then host others um, is also the idea that was mentioned, but to listen, it's a mixture of listening generously, but also inviting people when you hear, when you notice that someone's unwell or it's checking in on people, it's just, yeah, making sure that you're as compassionate with yourself as you are with others. And confidentiality also comes in in that because, uh, yeah, where, where does that boundary stop? when you're hosting mm. someone. Mm. Thank you. Well, I'm just wondering if that could be what we do between now and next week, if anybody wants to do something between now and next week, just that kind of awareness of compassion for yourself uh, and compassion for other, and whether one gets more of a look in than the other <laughs> in a conversation, you know? Uh, yeah, I just, I really love that. I think that's a really nice segue through, I guess, to next week and facilitation looking at what he was calling facilitation 101, uh, how to work with um, and a kind of power with democracy and facilitate in that way, and particularly facilitators' role and leadership in that and how how that plays out. So it's kind of very basic um, week looking at that before we move on to kind of design of assemblies and so on. It's, it's, I mean, as you said, it's often what people think these trainings are about. It's about facilitation. So we definitely put it in there, uh, the basics of that, but, which lots of you will be aware of, but it's always useful to, to reflect on. So I just I mean, uh, does that make sense to you as a question between now and next week? Just... Yes, for, for, for noticing, for, for uh, developing that self-reflexive muscle of, of how, you know, how am I, how am I doing this? And with one minute over, not too bad. Um, thank you all very much for being here. It's, it's been a real pleasure and um, look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank, thank you. Yes, thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. Very thank much. You. Have a beautiful Bye. week. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.